This video is a library research refresher made for the MSN Year 2 cohort for Fall 2020. Hello and welcome back. Um, this is Lana Wood and I am your faculty librarian. And welcome back to your second year of the Masters of Science in Nursing program. It looks quite a bit different than it did last year, um, but I hope that we can continue to work together and I'm looking forward to working with you live during your immersion event. Okay, so I know um, I've been in conversation with many of you last year with your research projects and know that a number of you have um, dove in and really used the library uh, services and resources that are available to you. So today we're going to do some search strategy review. I'm going to be um, introducing you to the PICO method, uh, which is one that I touched on briefly at last year's orientation, and we'll uh, show you that as another tool today. Um, I'll do a search demo including um, using Zotero, and that's a free open source software which um, helps with uh, creating citations, so those in-text citations in your bibliographies, as well as um, saving your resources. And then finally, I'll touch on all of the virtual services that are available to you during um, this COVID pandemic. Um, so same as always, uh, our library homepage, which is library.csueastbay.edu, is the best place to get um, access to all of the library collection and um, live help and other services available to you. So we'll spend some time digging into this. Note that our website is um, currently being redone, so it will look somewhat different beginning, I believe, at the beginning of the fall term, um, but still have a lot of the same functionality that I'll be showing you today. Okay, so at last year's immersion event, I showed you the who, what, how um, search tool and um, introduced you to PICO and SPIDER. And all three of these tools are named after the acronyms that they represent, and they're ways of getting you to think about your research topic and pulling out the pertinent components that you would need to find articles and other resources that match those topics in order to answer your research question. So um, we learned who, what, how last year uh, and today we'll be diving into PICO and that acronym, the P can stand for patient or population, the I is for intervention, the C for comparison, the O for outcome, and sometimes we also throw in T for time. And this is a tool that works best for typically um, questions that are answered with quantitative studies, so those that rely on um, surveys, uh, randomized controlled trials, those sort of things. And it's a tool that's frequently used in evidence-based medicine. It's been adapted to create the SPIDER tool, which is better for qualitative questions, or questions that are answered with qualitative studies such as interviews, focus groups, and ethnographic studies, um, where those terms have been rewritten into the SPIDER acronym to better represent um, the ways in which those sorts of studies are carried out. Okay, so as I mentioned, PICO is an acronym. The P can stand for population, patient, or problem. Um, it's to get you to think about how would you describe either the population that you're interested in studying, um, you know, perhaps gender, race, class, age are all ways that we can think about our population or a patient. Um, it could be a particular type of condition or what is the central problem that you're researching. The I for intervention, so what main intervention are you considering and what do you want to do with this population or patient? Again, this is really effective for evidence-based medicine, so it um, can still be a useful tool if you have more of a community health research question. Um, you just have to rethink that idea of an intervention or of a comparison um, outside of like a research protocol. So C stands for comparison. If you are comparing um, any other alternatives to the initial intervention, a lot of times it's just comparing it to doing nothing. And O, the outcome. Um, what are you trying to accomplish, measure, improve, or affect? So we'll run through two examples here so you can get a better sense of how this PICO 
protocol can help you get more specific in your question and search terms. So for our first one, we have that a 30-year-old man is diagnosed with depression and prefers to use herbal medicine to treat his symptoms. You believe an SSRI or an antidepressant would be more effective and want to give him a comparison of the two. So using the PICO protocol, we can pull out that the P here, the central problem, is depression. The intervention that the clinician is suggesting is the use of an SSRI, commonly known as an antidepressant. Um, and the patient is interested in an herbal medical treatment, so instead we're going to compare it to St. John's wort, which is a popular herbal supplement for depression. And ultimately, we want to know about the effectiveness of these two treatments to reduce depressive symptoms. So right here, we've pulled out the most important um, search terms that we would be going to the databases to look for answers to in order to um, address this patient's concern. We also can use those keywords that we've pulled out to build a more um, precise research question, which is in this case, is St. John's wort as effective as SSRI in reducing depressive symptoms for someone with depression? We could even get more specific in that question to talk about the age range of the patient or the gender. Here's another example. A patient wants to discuss the possibility of a vasectomy. He says he has heard that having a vasectomy can increase the chances for testicular cancer later in life. You know that the risk of this is low, but want to give him a more precise answer. So using the PICO protocol, we can pull out our terms. So here for our patient group of interest or population, we're interested in, in adult males. The intervention is a vasectomy. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of times the comparison is, you know, more binary, yet we're doing this and we're not doing this. So here we're comparing it to not having a vasectomy. And the outcome we're interested in is testicular cancer. And from these search terms, we can come up with our uh, question, which is, in men, does having a vasectomy compared to not having one increase the risk of getting testicular cancer in the future? Okay, now before I show you how we will be creating our search strategy with those keywords, I want to remind you of the different Boolean operators that are available to you to use in the databases. Um, hopefully you have experience now using these in your searches. These are three different tools uh, that you can use to have a more precise um, search strategy. So they are AND, OR, or NOT. And um, AND is most commonly used. It's a way of pulling together um, keywords and limiting your results so that they're more specific because you're saying it must include all, each, each result um, must include all of these search terms that I've included an AND with. So here, if we're looking on the, on the far left side, we're searching diet and exercise. And by doing that, we are only returning the smaller portion in the Venn diagram, which are articles that contain both terms. OR is another powerful Boolean operator, and it's a way of broadening and increasing your search results to make sure that they're more comprehensive. So here, uh, we're by searching African American or Black, we're being sure not to miss anyone from our population of interest or any studies that deal with these um, deal with this population of interest regardless of which terms the researchers and authors use. Finally, NOT is used less frequently, but it can also be powerful, and it's to exclude a particular term or concept from the results. So if you run a search um, on public health uh, interventions and almost all of them have to do with smoking and it's not related to your interest, you can type in public health not smoking to remove that portion of material that overlaps with public health um, that has to do with smoking and is not of interest to you. Um, we'll see how we use these once we start getting into the databases. Okay, so let's go back to our initial um, first example of uh, treating depression with either antidepressants or St. John's wort. So on the right is, is the search strategy that I've um, created based on our uh, search terms on the left. Um, I've bolded the Boolean operator so you can see them and I want to talk you through some of the things that you're also seeing. 
So our first concept, depression, I left that as is, but probably once I get into the databases, I'd be interested in seeing um, how the database assigns what's called a subject term, which I will show you, um, which is um, set by the National Library of Medicine and is the specific term that everything that would fall under that concept um, would get applied to. But right now we have depression and, because we're building a complex search, I put in parentheses the two terms that we have listed here for antidepressants because I find it easier to sort of visualize the search as um, concepts that are grouped together. So here we're using the Boolean term or because uh, I want to make sure that I'm retrieving results that relate to this particular intervention regardless of whether they use the term SSRI or antidepressants. If I were running this search I'd probably also throw in some more terms like spelling out SSRI and perhaps including some um, name brand prescription drugs that are used as antidepressants as well. Next we are just focusing on one herbal intervention here which is St. John's Wort. Um, depending on the results I may want to expand that as well. But you may notice that I've um, included parent, or, um, quotation marks around that. And you can do this in almost every database to say that you are searching for this term as a phrase. So if I remove the quotes then we could potentially have results that come back with all of these words present but not in that order. And by putting quotes around them um, what we're saying is that we need this to come back in this specific order, so in this phrase of St. John's wort. Um, so that's a great tool to use if you are searching for one concept that has multiple words in it. And then finally, we would I would um, run the search to see if we need this final component in it, um, which is to talk about either reduction or effectiveness. Um, most likely we would be able to get by without that portion, but um, we'll wait and see how it looks when we're live searching. Okay, so I mentioned this at the our meeting last year. Hopefully some of you have been using this. Um, and that is Zotero, which is a citation management tool. Um, it's completely free to use and it is not tied to your Cal State East Bay um, student status. So what that means is that once you graduate from this program, um, you can continue to use this service indefinitely. And it, uh, what it does is you have to install two pieces of software to your computer, which is the browser extension and the Zotero software. And what it does is when you're looking at an article online or database results, um, you can click on the button and it will automatically collect all of the bibliographic information needed for to make a citation and save it in your library. Um, if the PDF is also available, it will grab that PDF so that you can have everything in one place. And then when you go to create your in-text citations or your bibliographies in either Word or Google Docs, um, you can uh, automatically generate a citation in lots of different styles, including APA, um, so that you aren't handwriting which is a very painful process, those APA citations. So I'll show you what the browser plugin looks like as well as show you where you can go to get more help in addition to the Zotero website. Okay, um, we'll come back to this slide in just a moment. Okay, so here we are on the library homepage. Again, by the time you see this video, it may look a little bit different because it is going through a refresh, um, but uh, of course, we are starting out the website with uh, what services are available during COVID-19 um, as our physical services have been reduced, but our virtual services are always open and expanding to meet student needs. So if we go down to this website, hopefully this portion looks familiar to you. Um, we have these quick links with um, an easy access point to get to all of the databases that are offered through the library. We have over uh, 
let's see, we have 179 databases currently. Um, and uh, other services like interlibrary loan, journal search, which is if, if you knew that you needed a particular journal, um, like JAMA for instance, then you could go there and just access that one journal. Uh, we have our chat widget here, which is available 24-7, as well as other ways that you can get um, support and help, uh, which I'll be talking about or reminding you about at the end of this video as well. And then we have this one search screen, which um, what this is, is this is a custom product that we ha that we have, which searches through all of the databases, all of our physical and ebook record our holdings, videos, pretty much every resource that the library makes available to you is searched simultaneously in one search. Um, that probably sounds attractive because then you don't have to go into multiple databases, but um, it's a very overwhelming place to start your research. So what I like to use this for and what I will show you is if I know exactly what I need, like I have an article that I found in the bibliography of another one I was reading, um, you can use OneSearch to get straight to the full text. Or if I am working with students who have a more obscure research topic and we're just getting very few results in the databases that we're trying, I'll often go to OneSearch instead um, because there's just not very much out there on that topic. So we want to be able to leave no stone unturned. Um, also in this center area, um, hopefully you're familiar with the nursing subject guide that I put together. So if we go to the subject guides tab, and go down to nursing. Um, these subject guides are put together by the librarians who work with those departments and click go. So this is a custom um, research guide that I put together that uh, is specific to nursing. So we have information on getting started using PICO, finding articles, books, videos, drug information, nursing websites, APA citations, and then I'll point you to this um, Zotero page, which has more information on how to use Zotero. Um, and I really highly recommend if you haven't set this up yet uh, to get it going for your second year when you are going to be doing a lot more writing. Um, but we have links to databases that I recommend as well. Okay. Um, and just so you know, I'll be showing you as we get to some articles that the Zotero plugin is up here on my browser and I'll show you what it looks like once we're on some article pages. So let's go ahead and jump into a database. Um, I'm starting with CINAHL which is uh, specific to nursing and allied health um, but what I'm actually going to show you now is that I want to um, bring in whoops, some additional databases. Um, so that I can search. These are different databases that are available through the EBSCOhost platform. Um, so I'm going to bring in Academic Search Complete. I'm going to bring in some psychology databases as well, since we are talking about mental health. We already have CINAHL. Um, I'm going to bring in some of the Cochrane databases, which usually have to do with medical studies and systematic reviews. And I think that we should be good there. And I've added in um, my go-to, which is always Academic Search Complete, which is scoped for pretty much any higher education research you'll be doing. Okay, so now we are running multiple databases with this search. And let's see, we are interested in learning more about um, depression. So we're going to have our first concept there. We already have this Boolean operator term here. Um, let's see, we want to compare antidepressants. Oh, I have to remember how to spell that. Or um, let's go with, let's see, what was our search term? SSRI, and we'll see if we have more options once we run this search. And we are going to compare it to St. John's Ort. And I mentioned that I want to put it in quotes. Let's see if that affects our results at all. I'm not going to mess with any of the other advanced filters now. Um, some of these will be available to us once we get into our results page. 
um, but there are a lot of options avail for you, available to you down below. So let's go ahead and search, see what we get. And we are searching multiple databases here and we have 521 results. Um, let's say that we only want to limit it to peer-reviewed um, journal articles. We can click this here. Okay, we're now at 380. Let's say that we only want things from the last 15 years. That's another option for us. Let's see where we're at now. So now we're at 229. Um, you never want to click this full text limiter because if we don't have the full text in uh, in this database or these sets of databases that we're searching for, then I'll show you how to use this Find It at CSU East Bay to look for the full text in other databases that we do have or to easily request it for free from another library through Interlibrary Loan. Okay, so let's go to this one here. Are St. John's Wort and SSRI antidepressants really ineffective in depression? That sounds interesting. So if we go into this record, um, we see a few things here. We can get a lot of the information on the authors, their affiliations. Um, we have these major subject headings. So this is where I was talking about. Um, if you click on these, I'll just go ahead and click on these so you can see. So St. John's Wort. What these are, these are the specific terms that's set by the National Library of Medicine. And when we're searching by subject headings instead of by keywords, what it means is that it's a major component of that work. Um, so St. John's work won't just be on a footnote, um, you know, on page 15. It's, it's a central component of this research study. Okay. Um, so to access the full text, we could just click right here on this PDF full text. And, um, you know, from here we can save it to Google Drive, print it, email it to ourselves. We can also get um, the APA citation here, which we can copy and paste. However, I want to show you what it looks like to use Zotero. So if this um, browser extension, if we click on this, oh, I did not run my Zotero, so let me start up Zotero. You have to make sure that your um, desktop software is open as well. So this is what Zotero looks like. Um, you can see that I, I use it quite a bit. And let's try again. Okay, so it's defaulting to my most recently used um, uh, library in Zotero, which is a, for an article I was writing on food insecurity in libraries. Um, and it's gathered up. Let's see if we can just go there. Our St. John's word. Okay, so here it is here. So it's pooled. Um, all of this different is called metadata about the article. So we have the author's names, we have the abstract, the journal. It won't be perfect, so you may have to do some manual editing of this information. Um, but it's also grabbed for me the PDF, which I have here. So this is saved to my computer now. I wouldn't have to go back to that database. And from here, when I'm writing in Word or Google Docs, um, I can just compose my in-text citation automatically um, from this Zotero data and it will also make that end of text citation. So I really encourage you to use this. Um, also for projects that I work on with multiple people we can have these group libraries. So these are some of the um, shared articles that I'm writing with other folks um, that I'm using this for. And uh, okay so let's go back to our results list and what I want to show you now as a reminder is how you get the full text when we don't have it in the databases that you're searching. So here for this article we have just what's called the abstract. So we have um, you know the information about who wrote the author article, um, where it's published, that sort of stuff, but there's no full text. So instead we see this find it at CSU EB um, button here. We'll click on this, it will open up a new window. And if the full text is available, it would show up here with a link to it. If it is not, then we have this link to request article from Interlibrary Loan. We'll click on this, sign in with our NetID and password if we're not already, already signed in, and it will generate some of the um, information needed, usually 
So it looks like we missed the article author, so we'd have to go back here and copy and paste it. Um, but this is a completely free service, and once you click Submit Request, um, it takes about one to three days to receive an email with a link to the full text. Um, again, it's completely free, and any time you're doing your research, whether you're doing it through the library or through Google or somewhere else, and you come to what's called a paywall, um, which is where it's saying before you can access the full text, you know, your buying options are $50 or subscribe to us for $100. Um, as a student at East Bay, you should never have to pay those fees to access the full text of anything um, because we can get it for you for free from another library. Um, so again, that's interlibrary loan and you can access it by clicking through the find it at CSUEB um, and if we don't have it in one of our existing databases and you'll see that here. Let's see if we can find one that we do have through the databases just to show you what that would look like. Okay great, so this one we do have the full text in this database here through SAGE, so if we click on this and everything works, which is doesn't always happen, but it's great when it does, and it did here, then um, we have the full text through this other database, SAGE, available to us here, and Zotero works as well. So I'm just able to grab the PDF and the bibliographic information here. Okay, so the last thing um, that I believe I showed you last year, but I want to remind you of, is um, how to do a more organic literature review where you're going from the bibliography of an article to finding more full text. So I like to show Science Direct for this. I think that it's, um, you know, an excellent database for most medical topics as well. Um, and it does a nice job of showing how you can move through the bibliography of an article to find additional resources that are helpful for you. So uh, this search interface does look a little different. I find it harder to um, show for the Boolean terms, and I don't know why it does this, but it does. So you won't be able to see my terms as well. But I'll do that same search. So we're going to do depression and SSRI or antidepressants. Um, and did I spell that right? Yeah. And St. John's Wort. Okay. Let's see what we get in Science Direct. So we have 850 results. Um, I want to do the same thing where I'm limiting it. They don't have a filter, I believe, for just peer-reviewed, but we can limit it to research articles. Um, let's refine by the years. Mm, I'm not going to worry about the years. That's a lot of buttons to click right now just to show you this. Okay, so here are our results. Um, Let's say that we're interested in this one here, the treatment of minor depression with St. John's wort. So what I like about Science Direct, we could go straight to the PDF by clicking on this download PDF. Um, Zotero also works here. We have it showing up. Um, it gathered the PDF for us and saved it to that same library that I showed you earlier. Um, and what I like about Science Direct is they make it very easy to move from the literature review or the bibliography to get the full text to what they're referencing. And the reason why this is so important is because, um, you know, if you're one of the authors who is writing this article and you study um, the effectiveness of St. John's Word on depression or, you know, herbal, herbal, herbal medicine for depression, um, then you are going to be aware of, you know, other researchers who are writing on that topic. So the way that you point to those researchers is through your literature review and through your bibliography. So here, let's see. So this sentence here, data from epidemiological studies suggests that both younger and older adults suffer from minor depression, and for many individuals, this is not an... Um, 
Evanescent condition. Um, so then they cited these three studies. We could click on them and it's going to give us the bibliographic information here and if the full text is available in this database, which it doesn't look like it is, then it would have a link to the PDF here. But no problem, we can still get this full text by copying and pasting the article title and we're going to go back to the library homepage and this is that instance where I was saying it's great to use that one search screen which it defaults to when you're at the homepage. So let's put in that title and if all goes well it should be our first result. Ah, it is not in this case. Let's let's see if we can get it to work for another one. How about this one? Randomized placebo controlled trial. Okay. Let's try this one out. So this is still that one search screen, just looks a little bit different cuz I'm searching from the results. Hopefully, yes, so it did work in this case where it's the first result um, and we can get to the full text by clicking on this and it will give us our options of places to go to get the full text. So here we could click on this EBSCO and there we have it. Um, let's see if we have any of these where the full text is available in Science Direct. Not seeing a ton, strangely. Actually, there's quite a bit. Um, anyway, if that were available, we would see the PDF icon here. But uh, this is especially an effective technique for um, those of you who have um, a research topic where there isn't very much published about it, is if you find one or more articles that are almost spot on for your topic, then you really want to mine their bibliographies to find the resources that um, are also on your topic. Okay, so I've shown you a lot um, and you're welcome to revisit this uh, video if it is helpful for you, but what I really want to talk about now is how are you going to get help as you move through your second year. Um, so as I mentioned, I will be with you for half an hour during your immersion event where we'll be able to talk through any troubleshooting or questions that you have. Um, it would be most helpful if you can have already done some searches on your topic so you can come to that session with questions for me to address live. Some other options for you to get help are that 24-7 chat reference service that I mentioned. Um, it is either staffed by librarians from our campus or from librarians from the uh, cooperative that we are a part of. Um, so that, that's live help that you get exactly when you need it. Um, it's a very popular service in the middle of the night when I think students, you know, have finished work, have got their kids to bed, and they're working on their homework. Um, that's a, uh, one of the great features that it's available 24-7 as well as on the weekends. And you can access that from the library homepage or by clicking on the link um, that's shown here. Uh, the other option is to get help from me directly by appointment. So right now I'm offering Zoom appointments since we are not physically on campus. And you can book those by clicking on, um, I don't know if these links are live through this video, but by clicking on uh, or entering this bit.ly link, bit.ly slash wooded.eb. And those are my office hours um, that are offered. Uh, I have two standing hours each semester um, and half an hour appointments available for those. Those do book up pretty quickly or they may not work for your time. So if you don't see anything that works for you, you're welcome to just email me directly, lana.wood at csueastbay.edu and we can find another time that will work for both of us. Um, so please know that myself and the other librarians are available to help you as you complete your final year of the MSN program. Um, so I look forward to working with you all at the immersion event and um, best of luck with research and please keep in touch. Take care.